YouTube, Reclaimer here with 2XP Gaming. Liquid cooling. Haven't really ever done it, slash thought of it, until now. So, uh, I've been using air coolers pretty much all my computing career, as it were. Uh, and I wanted to, you know, I said I'm going to make the jump into liquid cooling. And one of the easiest ways that you can do that is by getting an AIO, or an all-in-one solution. And that's where the Corsair H105 AIO comes into play. So, we're going to be doing an unboxing and installation and thermal benchmarking against the Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo Plus, which is what my current solution is. So um, we're just going to take a look at the box here. The packaging is pretty cool looking. Definitely like the packaging. Gives you some features here. This has a 240 millimeter uh, by 38 millimeter radiator. This thing's huge. So the the three main um, dual radiator AIOs that uh, Corsair makes is uh, the H105, the H100i, and the H110. And this has the thickest of all radiators, so you have to make sure you have enough space um, in your case for it. Uh, it comes with two SP120L fans, so those are static pressure 120 millimeter fans, um, and, and all that fun stuff. So inside the box, you're going to get the uh, cool, uh, Corsair H105 uh, all-in-one liquid cooler, two SP120L high-performance fans, Mounting bracket and hardware, color accent rings, quick start guide, and a Y cable for fan connection. Just here's the back. Batteries running out. All right, so we've got some documentation. And here's what comes with it. So let's take a look. Here are the two uh, SP120L fans that come with it. Pretty boilerplate. These do not have the interchangeable color rings. Um, I guess that was just for the fans. Okay. Here we go. Here's all your mounting hardware and your color rings. I'm going to be putting red on to match my build. And then we have the pump, block, and radiator. This is a thick-ass radiator. Um, but it looks like it's got some real nice fin density. So, I don't know if you can see through it, but it's a nice fin density. Uh, then we've got the pump and block with the... Uh, thermal paste already applied, and then the Corsair logo is on front, which you can't really see right now, but it lights up. Okay, so we, we unboxed it. Now we're going to go ahead and look at um, some of the work that we did in order to get this prepped. So this is a Cooler Master Stormtrooper case. You're going to have to read your individual case manual to figure out what you need to do. But uh, for the Cooler Master Stormtrooper case, we removed the very top portion here so we could actually access this area and screw the fan and radiator in. I went ahead and already removed my Cooler Master Hyper 212 Evo Plus from here and I also installed the SP120L fans to the radiator uh, and hooked the Y cable up. So I, I kind of did some prep work here. So now we're going to be installing the back plate that comes with it. I have an Intel 1156 uh, socket so we're going to be having these set up for a uh, 1156 socket. And then this is just going to easily go right in the back. So we're going to move the camera over so we can show you how to install this part. It's extremely simple. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we already have this position for Intel 1156 or 1155, basically 115X type sockets. And what we're going to do is we're just going to put these into the holes here. And it's kind of tough for me to see, but I will make this fit. There we go. All right, so that was easy. That just kind of fits right in there. That's, so that's the back plate portion of it. Now we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna install the, um, the radiator and fans at the top. So we're now gonna be installing the standoffs here. Um, there are different standoffs based off of the socket you're using. Uh, so we're just gonna go ahead and screw these in. Make sure you're properly grounded, which I am. I have a wrist strap on the other side. So I'm just gonna get this started Great. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. We'll cut it. You want to cut it? No, I mean, you can keep filming. I'll just cut this out. Yeah, this part is fairly simple, but just make sure you get them screwed in hand tight at least. I believe these are the correct size. We'll find out when we put the pump in. Let 
This one's going to be a little tough because this thing here. There we go. Okay, that is installed. Next step we're gonna do is we're gonna install the radiator and fans. All right, so now we're in the process. Action. I said hold on. <laughs> and now we're in the process of installing the radiator and the fans. So, um, you know, you have to definitely make sure you have enough uh, ample room in your case. And I'll show you what that looks like when we're done here. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I already kind of got this started. This is a little bit of a pain, but you just wanna kind of get the first two in the middle here started so that way it becomes easier on you installing this radiator. I use the screws that came with the stormtrooper so you can use whatever you'd like. It says in the manual as well to for best cooling performance you know use uh, use the SP120Ls as in air intake fans. Um, I have them set up for exhaust, so I don't know how that's going to work out. If I notice any irregularities with cooling, then I will have to take this all apart, but I do have them set for exhaust. So the fans are going to be exhausting out through the case at the top. So you're just going to install the rest of them. Depending on your case, you're going to need six or eight screws. Actually, I believe all you need is six screws for this, so we, we lucked out. So we'll just continue installing these, and then our next step is going to be installing the, uh, the pump block. Okay, so basically we're going to be looking at case clearance here. So this is the bottom of the fans. These are the two 120mm fans. The radiator is on top. This gives you an idea of how much clearance you're going to have in this particular case. Um, I already went ahead and plugged the fans for the radiator into the CPU fan header. I'm going to be pumping the, uh, hooking the pump pin uh, up to the CPU OPT fan header. So the next step is going to be installing the block and pump. All right, so next thing we're going to be doing is installing the pump and block. This is uh, some thermal paste that's already been applied by the manufacturer. We're going to remove that. And we're going to go ahead and install this, uh, you know, depending on how you had this mounted um, is going to be how easy or not easy this is. And I'm going to tell you right now whether or not I'm using the right standoffs. Oh. Yikes. I think we got it. Let me just pull this up. Oh, yeah, we definitely got it on. All right. So now using the included thumb screws. We're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna use the, or not, star way of adjusting the torque here. Definitely going to need to be some cable management done here, but that's okay. Now, that one I'm going to get off camera because that's going to be a tough one to get in, but you get the idea. Now, you see a lot of people that they'll put the tubing over on this side. I didn't want it to block the airflow from the fan, so I do have it kind of running around here, um, you know, next to my RAM. Some people may not like the look of that. I don't mind it, really. Um, and then we're going to have to hook this in CPU OPT so we have something for the pump. And that should be it. Then we should be able to test it, make sure it's working. Uh, and as long as everything's working, then we'll go ahead and run some benchmarks. Cut. So we've installed the Corsair H105 all-in-one solution. Before I actually hook it up to do any benchmarks, we're going to go ahead and make sure I hooked everything up correctly. So just making sure you understand what we did. We removed the heat sink that was already on it. We installed the back plate. We installed the radiator with fans. We're going to be exhausting air out the top, which... 
according to the manual. That's not the right thing to do, but that's how I've seen it installed. I'm new to liquid cooling, so we're gonna try it out. And then we installed the pump and block, hooked up the fan header. So uh, if I can figure out which one of these is power, which I think is this one, maybe not. All the fans are running. We got a beep, which may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> of course, we don't have a monitor on right now. So the big thing I'm looking for is to make sure that these fans are running, which they are. I'm just going to check real quick. Make sure since I had my hands in here that all the other fans are running, which they are. Yeah, it looks pretty darn sweet uh, on the inside there. So the only thing left to do is to make sure, hook it up to a computer, make sure it's actually working properly, and then I'm going to show you some benchmarks. So here we are looking at the uh, Cooler Master Hyper 212 Plus Evo versus the Corsair H105 uh, at idle with fans at 40% speed uh, on CPU in the case. As you can see, the idle temperatures were fairly the same. There was only about one or two degrees difference um, in terms of temperature, but I can tell you that the uh, computer seems to run much quieter when you have the H105 running versus the two fans on the Hyper 212 Plus Evo. So that was definitely a, a good perk. Moving on, we're looking at the Prime 95 blend. This is run at five minutes with fans at 100% speed on the CPU and the case. Um, the difference between the H105 and the Hyper 212 Plus Evo was about uh, 10 degrees difference at load. However, I'm not really impressed with the 90 degrees that we got on the H105 during the blend run. Uh, it was definitely running a little hot, so uh, that did not really impress me. Moving on, we're looking at Prime 95 Large FFT. Again, five minutes, fans at 100%. We're looking at, again, a roughly 10 degrees difference on the H105 versus the Hyper 212 Plus Evo. Um, again, I'm not super impressed with these uh, with these with these temperatures it's just something that i thought i would have gotten better temperature out of and then finally the one that concerned me the most was prime 95 small fft uh five minute run fans at 100 percent cpu as well uh and this was the difference of about five degrees at the max temp so uh that's a big concern because it was only about five degrees away from tj max on my uh intel 4770k so i'm not really super impressed with the cooling on this right now and i think that it could be one of two things it could be actually one of three things one my thermal paste is not applied properly so i will go ahead and work on making sure that thermal paste is applied properly and try it out again Two, uh, it could be that uh, i just have a, a cpu that runs hot and three it could be an issue with the H105, so there will be additional troubleshooting needed. But again, the, the, you know the four um, benchmarks that you're seeing here, it does show you that liquid cooling does go cooler than uh, regular air cooling, about by five to ten degrees. But it's not cooling it as much as I thought it would. So it's definitely things that we need to check out. But that's all we have for the. Cool, uh, the Corsair H105 liquid cooler all-in-one solution. If you enjoy what you saw, please feel free to like, share, subscribe, and comment. Until next time, this is Reclaimer with 2XP Gaming signing off.